It is more dangerous than, say, mismanaged uh, aircraft design or production maintenance or, or, or b bad car production uh, in the sense that it is, it has the potential, uh, however small one may regard that probability, but it is non-trivial, it has the potential of civilizational destruction. Elon Musk issuing that dire warning about the use of AI and its major risk to society in an exclusive sit down with Tucker Carlson. And Tucker joins us now on Fox and Friends. Tucker, great to Hi, see you. Tucker. Thanks for being here. Oh, good morning. Good morning. We know you love getting up early. You had many years of training early on. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yes, you did. It's hard. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, so talk to us about this interview. Uh, you know, the way he sort of calmly says civilizational destruction is possible as a result of AI. Your big takeaways. Well, he's been saying that for years. And, you know, AI sort of, emer you know, like bankruptcy, it happens slowly then all at once. We've been hearing about it for years, including Elon Musk warning about its potential, as he said, civilization ending consequences. And then all of a sudden it's here and you can download it onto your phone and play with it, chat GPT, and like, what is this? And so we thought it'd be worth sitting down with the guy who helped create that app. He funded its development because he wanted to be able to control it, keep it out of the marketplace, keep it in a nonprofit. Long story there, but effectively that was taken away from him. Um, and now you have it as a commercial product owned by hmm. Microsoft and, and Google. Um, but his position has never changed, which is if we don't put the brakes on this, it could end up destroying everything that we have. This is as dangerous as nuclear weapons. Tucker, uh, interesting word to use, control. I mean, you're a forward-looking guy, big thinker. Is it controllable? And, and if it is controllable, who should control artificial intelligence? Well, that's a, that's a very good point. Um, it doesn't seem like, like a virus. You know, we have these, these illusions, these delusions of control. We can keep it under control, lock it down. But really, it's beyond human control. That's the fear. Um, I mean, I, I guess on some level, it's controllable because it, it lives on server farms that you know, presumably could be, could be blown up if need be. Uh, but the deeper problem is not simply that it will become autonomous and turn us all into slaves, but that it will control our understanding of reality and do it in a really dishonest way. It could be programmed to lie to us mm -hmm. um, for political effect. And by the way, if you go on it, I mean, just play around with it. Type in crime stats, like where are these crimes? Who's committing these crimes and where? It will lie to you about government data on crime and probably a lot of other things. That's terrifying because you could imagine a future a year or two from now where all of our understanding of the world around us is determined by AI and it's lying to us. So um, that has huge implications for say the presidential election in 2024 and everything else. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because we do have that clip, watch this. What's happening is they're training the AI to lie. Yes. It's bad. To lie, to that's lie. exactly right. And to yes. withhold information. To lie and, and yes, you know, comment on some things, not comment on other things. But, but not to say what, it, what, what the data uh, actually uh, demands that it say. How did it get this way? I thought it's, it's, you funded it at the beginning. What happened? Yeah, well, that would be ironic. But faith, the most ironic outcome is most likely, it seems. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Tucker, that is interesting that he, he helped fund it in the beginning. He talks about these programmers being left wing. So if you go on chat GPT and you ask who is Donald Trump or that you, you ask who is Joe Biden, will you get completely skewed answers? I think it's probably more subtle and more insidious than mm -hmm. that. But look, the main struggle of our time is the struggle to control information, to control what we know and therefore the conclusions that we draw from the information. The Internet is a huge threat to people like Chuck Schumer, people who want political power. And so what you're seeing right now is the U.S. Congress, is the government, try to seize control of the way AI is developed because it's always developing, it's always becoming stronger and more knowledgeable, early in order to bake the dishonesty into mm. it in order to control the minds of the American population. This is a direct attack on democracy. You can't have a democracy unless people know what's happening, right? Unless they can cast an informed vote. And the effort by Washington, to some extent on a bipartisan basis, is to prevent you from knowing what's happening in the rest of the world. Yeah, I mean, you've done a Tucker Carlson uh, today with uh, the founders of uh, Wikipedia. It, 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 yes. Same thing, you know, that had a, 
in tempted to have a, effectively an encyclopedia of all knowledge and it turned into a left-wing engine and you can definitely see the potential for this here. You broke some news too, Tucker, in this interview about what Elon Musk might be doing about it. Here's the clip. We're going to start something which I know you call Truth GBT or uh, a maximum truth-seeking AI that tries to understand the nature of the universe. And I think this, this might be the best path to safety in the sense that an AI that cares about understanding the universe uh, it is unlikely to annihilate humans because we are an interesting part of the universe. So dueling GPTs, the idea that it could it be like much like our media, you you go where you go and based on what you believe. You just need an option. That's exactly right. Now, as to his point about controlling the universe and destroying humanity, <laughs> my brain's not large enough to understand that. Though I think we should pay attention to his conclusions because his brain is. But just as a question of truth. You just need an option. You just need a place to go where they're not lying to you, or maybe not even lying to you as much, where you can get the information and make your own decisions about it. And people like Schumer, and you really can't overstate the evil, the malice behind their intent here. Their intent is to control what you know and therefore control your brain. That's not an overstatement. And so you just need an option. Um, in the way that I, Fox News provides an option, which is one of the reasons they're mm. always trying, staying up late, trying to shut us down, because they don't want you to have an alternate way of knowing what's happening in the world. Tucker, what did you think of him? What was he like? He's hilarious. <laughs> um, he's hilarious. And <laughs> he started by saying, I mean, this is, I, I was amused anyway. I'm very easily amused, but, and I appreciate being <laughs> amused, especially right now. But he said, you know, I bought Twitter for $44 billion, and now it's worth $22 billion. So obviously I'm a brilliant businessman. <laughs> Dead panic. <laughs> so, no, he's very, very funny. Extremely funny. Loves puns. Loves wordplay. You know, and humor suggests a kind of ironic detachment from yourself. It suggests wisdom. You have yourself in perspective. People who take themselves too seriously, yeah. uh, like Stalin, uh, or Chuck Schumer make me very uncomfortable and should make us all uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, if you don't know how ridiculous you are, you're a threat <laughs> to the rest of us. So, uh, Tucker, really quickly before we go, uh, let's take one more watch of what we can ex expect tonight on Tucker Carlson tonight, and this is about what he discovered once he bought Twitter. The degree to which uh, various government agencies had effectively had full access to everything that was going on on Twitter uh, blew my mind. Um, I was not aware of that. Would that include people's DMs? Uh, yes. <laughs> Tucker, yeah. I, I don't want you to give it away, because uh, we'll all be watching at 8 o'clock tonight. But what was your biggest jaw-dropper moment of this interview? Well, Twitter is the smallest of the social media apps, but it's the one that's used by the people with power. I mean, it's everyone sitting on the set right now. It's every government official. It's, you know, it's every head of state. and. All of their private messages were being read, not just by the U.S. intel agencies, but by a bunch of different governments. I mean, that's, that's like an unbelievable fact. The whole thing was a honey trap um, in order to surveil people and then to propagate propaganda. Like, that's, that's insane. Mm. I, I didn't really understand that. That is incredible. And, and Twitter's the only one we know about, so who knows what's going on Yeah, well, exactly. exactly. That's right. Well, do not miss Tucker's interview with Elon Musk on Tucker Carlson tonight at 8 p.m. And we hope you, you will also check out the new Tucker Carlson original special called Let Them Eat Bugs. <laughs> and it looks, Tucker, like you tried a bug or two. It does look like that. <laughs> I'll eat anything, as you know. <laughs> Just oh. dip it in chocolate. <laughs> thank All you, right. Tucker. Thank you, Tucker. Thanks Great for, to see thanks you. Thanks for having me. Good see you guys. See you. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. From Tucker Carlson tonight.